At a standstill with some of our work. I'm waiting on a bloke to help me weld this, but he's gone on holidays for two weeks. Everything's out of this car. It's just a bare shell with suspension so I can roll it around. Um, also need some help with this one here too. But anyway, he's away for two weeks. Got to finish off this 351 the stick on the running engine stand. Uh, but the bloke who's got the starter motor for this 390, this is all ready to go. But the bloke's got the starter motor on holiday with his kids for a week, which is a good thing. So, going to start looking at this thing now. Bought it for 50 bucks from a fellow from Wonga Park. An old gentleman used it for uh, washing his overalls. He was a mechanic. Uh, now it does run well, but it's not without its issues. Here we go. Well, it's got these two levers. Wash. So the agitator's lovely. There's no noises there. That's all going well. And then pump. Pump's a bit noisy. Now I filled it up with water before. Let's see if that ringer works. Oh. Forward, backwards. This is a good one too because it's got a safety rail, so if you get your fingers jammed, that'll release its pressure. Now, it's not without its issues. The pump's had a bit of a wee when I put water in it, um, so I've got to take the pump out. I think the O ring's gone in it. This has been out before. I'll just take that agitator out, and it was absolutely. I've already started cleaning that. The chockers were silt. You couldn't actually see the drain hole before. And true to his story, it was full of stuff like this. Overall buttons, bits of steel, electrical terminals. It was actually caked, you know, right up to that lip where the enamel starts, just in crud. We had the clip that holds the, the, the pump strainer in, and the pump strainer had sort of gone off and was over here somewhere, so I've got to repair that as well. I think I'll just properly put that back into the clip. So I'm going to start pulling it down and cleaning it up. Yeah, woo! Okay. What do you reckon, Rosie? Four exhaust pipes. Yeah, you don't care, do you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll do something more interesting. Now, I have no idea what I'm doing with this. I'm an automotive mechanic, not a washing machine mechanic, but I'm going to take a part. I'm going to take this ringer off. I wanted to put, the, uh, put it upside down so I can access underneath it to do what work I need to, but I'm not sure how this all comes off. I'm, I'm hoping it lifts out. Oh, it's right. It lifts out from there, though. Yeah. I'm just going to get a rag, I think. Given that I have no idea what I'm doing. Does this shaft... It's got like a... Yeah, it's got a dry. Oh god, that's a mess, isn't it? Put that back in. Just keep it clean. I have come across a couple of these um, advertised with C's gearboxes. But I'll tell you what, it all looks pretty good now. I'm just gotta clean it up a bit. Now, if you try and clean this up with kitchen cleaner, you'll be there for about the next 14 years. I'm just gonna use prep wash, which is an automated paint solvent-based cleaner. This rag's really dirty, but for what I'm doing, it really doesn't matter. And you can just wipe it off. You can see I made a start on it before. This wipes all this off, but it won't attack the paint uh, or the enamel. Get rid of all that. It's going to make sure when we tip this thing over, I'm just going to lie it on some old sheets that we don't damage anything. Any of the on top. And you can see how wonderfully, wonderfully simple these are. That's where it's had its little wee. You can see a bit of water there. So I'm tipping that this, there'll be an O-ring or a seal under here, which I reckon has gone. The pump hose also is a bit kinked. But you can see just how simple. Look, there's an active and neutral and an earth to the motor. There's no timers. Uh, reset button and a junction box. So I want to check, this has got a sump in it. That's a sump plug. I just want to make sure, I'm not going to pour oil everywhere, but also I want to check that it's uh, good to go. I'm not sure how much oil they use either. But it's just a matter of cleaning it up and finding out why. That pump's noisy when you engage it, but it's quiet there when we turn that. It's all just done with a system of pulleys. When I hit that button, it brings it up. I don't know why it's so noisy though. Not sure. I have to have a look at that. I've got to watch this because this is a plastic body pump. 
And the last thing I want to do is put it under duress and break it. It's leaking out of the water pump. There we go. Uh, manky. Look at that. Oh, that's why it's leaking. Oh, the dog, dog's going nuts. Here's the impeller. See, Charlie, I've got to do this one. That's Susie and her bags and umbrellas. <laughs> it's a different green. Right. I've got to do these wheels too. These wheels are all stiff to move, so I'll take them out and grease them. But this here looks pretty shonky, so I better get into that. What did you say? No, nothing. <laughs> Water pump. No, don't. I'll get in trouble. Hang on. I'm not messing with you. I think that's a rubber seal. It's got rubber veins. It's all pretty cool, but it looks fresh as inside. It looks really good, but this end plate thing where's, is where the leak was. So I've got to clean that up now. Well, we've got a few water pump dramas. Uh, the housing looks really good. The impeller's in good condition, uh, but the lid's destroyed. It's, it's got little pinholes from corrosion and this sort of thing in it. And the other thing I've tried to do um, is get a new seal now. We can use a, an O-ring, but the problem with the O-ring is it's inclined to roll in there, which won't seal too well. The original one was flat. You can get rubber stock and you can cut it out, but I'm using this hydraulic ring. Um, it's quite a hard rubber, but it sits uh, in that channel quite well and will seal up and, no, and not move around, which is good. That's how we want it to be. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have to clean this up as best I can. I'm just using a soft brush. Now this lid, I have to say, is pretty knackered. So I'm just going to use a two-part epoxy in there. It does stick to aluminium, which is a good thing. And I'll mix it up and block up all those pinholes. I don't need a mixing tray, I'm just going to do it in the lid here. Block up all those pinholes and just look against the light to see where they are. There's another couple there. And what this will do is it'll seal, because it's impervious to water, which is a good thing. Now if worst comes to the worst, and this pump fails and all the rest of it, you can buy electric ones, universal ones for modern machines. They're about $30 off um, online. I just have an independent one that operates off a micro switch. It's pretty easy to do. Um, I would sooner do it this way and use the original kit. But um, given that uh, washing powder is pretty alkaline, it's made a bit of a mess of this. Well, I've cleaned up this housing. A bit of tape over there to stop the, the adhesive running out. I'm going to let that set overnight. Uh, that should be as good as new. Shouldn't leak at all. So I'll put that down for now. I'm just going to clean up in here a bit. Just so that I know if any marks in the future are new, new sort of oil leaks. I just want to keep it nice and clean. Now the bloke I went and saw, I went and saw a specialist with these things and he said don't use gear oil in them because it will pressurise in there. They use a thinner oil like an automotive engine oil um, and you don't use too much of it because again it can pressurise and blow out seals and all sorts of stuff. These are all dry on. To lubricate all these as well. Should probably put new wheels on. But we'll fix the old one. Now given that some oil has leaked out of it over the years, still got oil in there I think, but I'm just gonna put a couple of squirts of engine oil in because when I get it going, I'm going to um, run it uh, and then I'm going to drop the plug with it around the right way just momentarily for a second just to see if any water comes out I'm paranoid about water filtering into this box from the top because I'm not taking the top part off and if that's the case that's what causes them to seize and give trouble there's no inspection cover on it, the gearbox is actually quite deep on this I might just put a tad more in so that's about it for now, the gearbox is nice and clean, topped it up with oil a little bit all the electricals look good, the belt's in good condition as well. 
very very clean under here wheels are all moving now which before they were very very stiff so that's all good so after that pump housing's uh, gone off I can sand it down and put it back in put the pump back together and we can put it back the right way up right stuck the pump back in just the three mounting screws spins nice and freely and engages when you when you actuate the lever sealed the lid got the epoxy on I also put a bit of elastic around the edge of it not a bad idea to uh, hold your hand over here and blow in there just to make sure it's holding air. These aren't under a tremendous amount of pressure, but just the weight of the water in the tub, I suppose, but still they can leak fairly easily. Yeah, I'm having a cup of tea. When I was at university, I used to have about eight cups of coffee a day, and now it's tea. Not that many, though. Mm. Less caffeine, though, which is always a good thing, isn't it? As you can see there, the yellowish colour of the epoxy. I did it yesterday. It's been about 24 hours now. I don't know, I might wait till tomorrow before I fill it with water. But that's all in, they're looking pretty good. Pull it back your way. <laughs> How good is that? Bit less than ideal putting this old hose on. It's got sort of a hose on top of a hose, but it didn't leak. Um, and I haven't got the, uh, I couldn't get the right tight. The last thing I want to do is send all this crap down that pipe there to the water pump. One last quick look before we put him up the right way. I sort of drop this agitator back in. I think that's in. I don't know how you know where it's in. That'd be right. Okay, clean up around the cabin. It's very important to remember this stuff is solvent based um, and it will perish rubber like that if you're not careful. So when you put it on, you only want it there momentarily. And I'm just going to use a toothbrush to scrub out some of this, some of this muck. And that's proving to be quite hard to get out. This is auto polish. Oh, great for enamel. You want to take it away from the seal yep. and run off the edge of it so it's rotating this way, so I want to buff it that way yep. off the edge. Oh, yeah, hang on, I'm just going to put a bit of grease on here. The old grease seems to either dry out or go all liquidy, and this was all mucky and liquidy, so I'm just going to re grease these. Well, you can ask her, but she, I don't know if she'll do it or not. <laughs> Let's put this back on. I've got to put this in, I've repaired that, that's the strainer uh, for the pump. Just pop it in so it's nice and sturdy. I just forgot to put it in so I ripped the agitator out and stick that in. Alright, time to test this thing. I've got some manky old garage trackies. Hello. And we're going to see if it leaks water. So I'm going to fill it up with water now and we'll see how we go. There's my old dust coat. I'll have to just push that down with a stick or something. Detergent. Now I'll even throw in the rag I polished it with. Gee, it's quiet, I can't believe how quiet it is. You can barely hear it. How cool is that? It's quiet. Hello, Claire. Now check this out, I've never heard, no, I've never heard a machine so quiet, look, it's washing, look at this, manky garage clothes, that water is foul, you got to help me ring though, because I've never used one of these, can you help me ring, 
Thanks, Charlie. Right, I reckon that's enough for a wash, so I'm going to pump it out. Just hold on to it. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, but it gets rid of the bulk of it because I don't want to. You've got to do a rinse. Fill it up with. <laughs> we'll fill it up with water again and give it a rinse, eh? Well, that was a success. All I need to do now is find a spot for it in the corner somewhere and plumb it in. And we're good to go. So, what's it cost? The machine was fifty dollars to buy. I used some Prepsol to clean it up, which is stuff I had from the cars. I didn't use much of it anyway. A bit of engine oil in the gearbox, and the seal for the pump was two dollars. So all up, fifty-two bucks. See you later.